eyes. Tired snowflakes. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I am so excited to share this video because I feel like this video has been asked for by so many of you guys, and that is how do we do morning basket? If you've been around um, and doing any kind of homeschooling research, you will see that a lot of people have morning baskets or morning time or morning routines um, that usually begin the homeschooling day. So I am very excited to be partnering up with two other ladies. This is a collab. Um, Jessica from The Waldock Way and Abby from Full Time Wife Life. We are doing a collab to show you guys in actual time um, how we do our morning basket. So if you've been watching my channel, I have been sharing monthly what is inside my morning basket, but today I am actually gonna be showing you guys how we do it. Um, and so I feel like this will help a lot of people who maybe are new to homeschooling or are quite kind of unsure, like what does a looping basket even really mean? But the most important thing to know when watching videos like this is what works for one person and their family may not work for the other. Every homeschooling family has different desires and different things that they wanna teach their children or spend time and emphasis on. So it's not to say one is better than the other, they're just different. And so if you've watched my morning basket videos, you know that I do a theme for each month. And it usually correlates with a holiday or it correlates with um, our science unit or it correlates with um, a historically significant time period, for instance, the civil rights movement. Um, and so those are the things that I like to add into my morning basket. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys every step of the way what we do. Um, but be sure to go and check out the other two ladies' videos. Their channels will be linked down in the description box. It is about nine o'clock right now, and that is usually when we start our school day, sometimes a little earlier, but I'm always trying to start by nine. So you guys saw I've already lit my candle, I've made my coffee, and now I am ready to start our morning time, which always starts on the couch. I start on the couch and I will show you the things we do on the couch and then we move to the dining room table behind me and I will show you the things that we do there. So for me, morning time is a time of learning together with all of my kids in aging, ranging in age from 13 almost all the way down to eight. And so this is our group subject learning time. Um, and then we do independent subjects upstairs at their school desks. So that's how I've structured it. So morning time for us is all encompassing. Um, it includes our history, it includes our science. Anything we learn as a group goes in my morning basket. So. I'm gonna go ahead and gather up all the kids. We're gonna sit down on the couch and I'll show you guys how we start our morning time. All right, so here is my morning time basket. We, I've done so many videos showing you guys what's in here, so go ahead and watch those videos if you wanna see. Um, so the first thing we always start with is our family devotional. We have been loving our 24 family ways and so many of you guys have asked me to show you exactly how we do this. So the first thing is we turn to whatever week we're on. So we're on family way 18, which is right here. And then it's very easy to see. So day one, it starts with asking a question. So I usually do both of them. Then we read the scripture that's referenced here. Then we talk about it. And then we pray together over everything we read. So it goes day one through day five. And I just follow it exactly like that. This has been very, very beneficial to our family. And on the back, um, we kind of talk about the different character traits. And then this is where we get our scripture memory from. 
that they work on. Um, this is just like a little extra thing that you can read. And then this is a story to kind of read to them. And then I kind of ask them like, what do you guys think about that? So, so many of you have asked me to show you how I do this. So this is how we do it. And this is what we always start with. So everybody's here including the dollies and the puppy. And so we are gonna get started with this first. I feel like if you make others feel good, it also makes you feel good too. So, when, but it's not asking if you make yourself feel good. It's when others make you feel good or when you make others feel good. I say both, both, both. And why? Because it's always nice for someone to do something nice to you, and it's nice to do something like that for them. So in the Sermon on the Mount, who remembers where in the Bible the Sermon on the Mount is given? What book? It's when Jesus, it's one of his most famous teachings. Matthew? Good. Jesus explains why loving others from a new heart is more important than law keeping. He starts with the blessings of the B attitudes. And the B attitudes are things that, that um, you guys will hear about a lot. There are attitudes that Jesus basically gave saying, be like this, be like this, be like this. So this is in his Sermon on the Mount, which is in the book of Matthew, like Caleb said. So I'm going to read Matthew 5. 1 through 12. So it says, Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and then he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are those who are sad. They will be comforted. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for what is right. They will be filled. Blessed are those who show mercy. They will be shown mercy. Blessed are those who hearts, whose hearts are pure. They will see God. Blessed are those who make peace. They will be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer for doing what is right. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed are you when people make fun of you and hurt you because of me. You are also blessed when they tell all kinds of evil lies about you because of me. Be joyful and glad. Your reward in heaven is great. In the same way, people hurt the prophets who lived long ago. So, the word blessed means happy is. According to Jesus, who is the only one who is really happy? People of the Holy Spirit. God people who have the Lord. Why are peacemakers happy? Be Libby? Because they have God with them. True. We are reminded of all of those attitudes that we um, want to emulate in our own lives. I thank you for the blessing that it is to be able to teach um, my children at home, your word and your truth. I pray that this week's family way of being peacemakers would transcend deeply into our lives. Uh, you know that we struggle in this area and I pray that each of the kids would choose to be peacemakers instead of starting arguments or speaking unkind words or doing things knowingly that it bothers the other person. I pray that you would help all of us cultivate more of a desire to be peacemakers, knowing that we will be blessed because of it and our home will be filled more with peace instead of arguments. We thank you for this time. Please be with us as we go about our day and complete all of the work that you have for us. So after we finish up with our 24 family ways and our prayer, then I will usually move on to um, some of the additional books that I have picked up at the library or um, purchased. And today we are still continuing on, um, even though Martin Luther King Day has passed, um, but we, I'm going to read this book, The Bee Attitudes, because 
as you guys saw, we just read the Beatitudes, and so I thought that this would be a perfect tie-in. This book is by Carol Boston Weatherford. Um, I, I found it at the library, but I will link it for you guys. So I'm going to read this one, and, um, and then we also have in here um, a weather book right here extreme weather from National Geographic. We are gonna be doing a science lesson today. Our science is weather from the good and the beautiful right now. And so I am going to not read this entire book because it's pretty long, um, but I'm just gonna kind of flip through it and kind of outline some of the things that are in here. So that is what we are gonna do next for our morning time. Attitudes right from the scriptures. We were reading Matthew oh. 5, three through 12. Is this Christian book? We'll see. So it says, since the first African American churches were founded in the 18th century, black religious organizations have brought biblical values to bear on the freedom struggle. Black ministers preached against the institution of slavery and slaves sang spiritual promising deliverance from bondage. African Americans drew on that same faith during the segregation era, which we already learned about, the segregation. And when the masses rose up against racial oppression during the civil rights movement, they were emboldened by a belief in a just and compassionate God. They trusted that God was with them and that he would set them free. So the first one says, I am the Lord, your God. I was with the Africans who were torn from the motherland and cramped in the holds of ships on the middle passage from Africa to the Americas. I heard them chant, Kumbaya, Kumbaya. A heat wave, what we experience a lot, is actually a form of extreme weather. That's why they put out the the extreme heat advisories oh, yeah the warnings because it's so hot that you can yeah it's too hot for you to really be outside you can actually die from dehydration or heat exhaustion so anytime the weather threatens your life that's kind so here's a heat wave right here here's some pictures of what that looks like and it has this interesting fact Why that i each other Oh, they're, they're just playing in a fountain during a heat wave. Okay, I didn't really It says, want to know how hot it is outside? Listen to a cricket. By counting the number of times a cricket chirps, you can calculate the temperature. Yeah. Here's how. Count the number of times a cricket chirps every 14 seconds, and then add 40 to that number. The total is the temperature in Fahrenheit. That's, That's interesting. Funny. So a heat wave is defined as if it stays abnormally and uncomfortably hot for more than two days. It is a heat wave and it can be very dangerous. Hot temperatures can lead to many heat related illnesses. When you get sick from extreme heat, it's called hyperthermia. Hyperthermia is when your body's internal temperature gets too hot, just like when you have a fever. What's it called when you get too cold? Hypothermia. Hypothermia. Sit up. What can I do? Thank you. And cross your legs. Cross your legs. Then you can do. Are you being a peacemaker? It's Kylie. You're distracting me. Cross your legs and keep your feet still. Thank you. Okay. So during a heat wave, you should stay indoors, wear loose fitting and light colored clothes, drink a lot of fluid. Fluid. Waters. <laughs> Waters. <laughs> it can get so hot during a heat wave that train tracks can bend. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so cold waves is basically the opposite of that. Yeah, I just get Okay, so now we just finished these two additional books that I am reading to them. Um, that we just finished reading. So now we are gonna head over to the kitchen table right over there for our science lesson. And then once we complete our science lesson, that is when I will read aloud um, probably about two chapters of our read aloud, just our family read aloud right now. Um, and I usually do that while they have a snack 
um, after breakfast and before lunch. So that is what is next on our basket time for this morning, just to give you guys a time check-in. It's about 10 o'clock now, so we've been going for about 45 minutes. So we're gonna head over to the table now and start on our group science lesson. While you guys shade in whatever graph we're, for the weather we're having today, I want you to listen. In the last lesson, we learned that air is everywhere around us, that air does or does not take up space. It does. And that air has weight. The weight of air presses down against the earth and the objects upon it. We call this pressing down of air what? Gravity. Air pressure. Gravity. Today we're gonna learn more about air pressure and how air pressure affects the weather. So we have the definition right here of air pressure and it says the weight of air pressing against an object. Oh, usually it doesn't press down very hard. Like if that doesn't work, just put an X on it. And so we're going to learn what air pressure is. So the first thing that you guys need to do is, um, does everybody have a pencil? Now that everyone has a pencil, I want you to label the side of the paper one through five, but leave a couple of lines between each one so that way you can answer the questions that we're going to write down. So write one and then skip a few and make two, skip a few, make three. There, keep going all the way to five. Four, do four here, and then five. Okay, the first question is, what is air pressure? That's question number one. So we're gonna write, what is air pressure? What is air pressure? Uh-huh, we're not answering it right now. We're just writing the questions down. Air pressure, I'm curious. P-R-E-S-S-U-E-U-R-E. -S -S -E. I spelled it right. Two S's. U-R-E. Right? And we need question marks. I love question marks. Okay, number two. Does air only push down? And we see that it's the earth because the earth is under what? Air pressure. Air pressure. Okay. Air is all around us. It is above us, beside us, and behind us. Air is in our pockets, in our hair, and even inside our bodies. We can't see it, but it is there. We can feel air as a gentle breeze or a strong wind, but even on the calmest day, air is always there. Air is always there. Is that cool? No, the girls. Though we may not be able to see the air, air is real physical matter. So physical matter means it actually is something. It so what well, air pressure is physical matter. No, that's air pressure. This is just talking air. about air. <laughs> air is made up of different types of gases. Most of the oh, air is made that. up of what? Nitrogen. And oxygen gas. But there are other types of gases in the air too, such as argon and carbon dioxide. And just as all matter is made up of microscopic molecules, these gases are also made up of tiny molecules. So air is considered physical matter because carbon dioxide, oxygen, and oh, what's the nitrogen, nitrogen, those are all chemical. All right, so we just finished science. Um, it was a little rough. And so now we are just gonna move on and I am going to do our read aloud. So the kids are just having a snack and we're still sitting at the table. Um, and I just share, like this video was supposed to be real time of me doing my morning time. And um, if I'm just being honest and transparent, I don't want to make it seem like everything is perfect. Of course, I'm not gonna film um what is going on but it was a little bit rough and so um you know it's just hard homeschooling is not easy it is not for the faint of heart and so i am just choosing to power on and um, continue on with our morning time 
uh, reading this and then there may be potential consequences later for uh, the disruptiveness and the lack of cooperation. Um, but it's about 10.40 now, so uh, science took about 40 minutes. Um, there were uh, quite a few experiments that we could have done today, but due to the attitudes, I've just decided to not go ahead and do to do the experiments. So we're just going to go ahead and move on. And uh, like I said, I'm going to read two chapters in Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. I'll probably read the entire first chapter, and then I'll pass around the book and have my older kids read each a couple pages. And um, then that will be the very last thing that we do for our morning time before we go ahead and go upstairs and start working on it. So who remembers where the story left off? Well, Libby. Um, he was telling a story. Yeah, and they were taken where? To a science room. To a science lab, good. The maze. During the days that followed, our lives fell into a pattern and the reason for our captivity gradually became clear. Dr. Schultz was a neurologist, that is, an expert on brains, nerves, intelligence, and how people learn things. He hoped by experimenting on us to find out whether certain injections could help us to learn more and faster. The two younger people working him up he submitted meekly enough and in a short time he was back in his cage yet he had learned some things he had all right you guys so that is going to be it for this do my morning basket with me in real time video it is 11 o'clock now and so we are going to head upstairs and they are going to start on their grade and age level specific work I hope that this helps you see how we do morning basket. Sometimes my books are different. Sometimes we look at different things. Sometimes we're doing art. Sometimes we're doing geography. That's the beauty of it. You can really make it whatever you want it to be and you don't have to do the same things every day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out the other ladies videos who also did this um, collab with me. Thank you guys so much. Give me a thumbs up before you go and I will see you all in my next video really soon. Bye guys.